What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Haunted Beard. Thank you for joining me. Today, I want to talk to you about Slasher Ripper. This is the fifth season of the series. It is streaming exclusively now on Shudder. Wanted to give you my thoughts, so here we go. In Slasher Ripper, Toronto's elite are thrown into a panic when a member of the upper class is badly murdered, and a killer dubbed The Widow is now on the loose. I've now watched all five seasons of this show, and season five is pretty similar to the other seasons. Obviously, the setup and the central plot is a bit different, but if you know and you've been watching this show, you know that they use a lot of the same actors in every single season just playing different roles. And here with the fifth season, you've got kind of a play on the Jack the Ripper type killings. However, it obviously isn't set in London, it's set in Toronto, but it still takes place kind of in that mid-late 1800s type era. And so they're really kind of using that sort of setting as an inspiration to tell this story. And the main source of the conflict here, why the widow is going around killing people, has to do with the class division. You've got the rich people and the poor people. The rich people are the oppressors, the poor people are the oppressed. The rich people are the bad guys, the poor people are the good guys. That's pretty much sort of your basic setup there. And with sort of the time period that this is set in, you've got obviously murder, you've got secrets, you've got corruption, you've got magic and seances and things like that. And they're all kind of woven into this sort of murder mystery, whodunit type of a story. I think one of the best things about Slasher Ripper is simply the visual presentation of it. This looks really pretty, specifically the lighting, and I think just the time period and the location kind of lends a lot to the overall look and visual aesthetic of this season. Namely, you've got a lot of the scenes that are lit by candlelight, and so you've got just kind of this nice sort of warm glow, this sort of dark orange type color to it all, a lot of sort of silhouettes and just nice lighting and things like that. And so overall just looks very nice. It looks very pretty. And I, I think it just has a nice visual presentation to the whole thing. And while there is some really nice visuals, the camera work here is is fine, is serviceable for the most part. There's nothing about it that really sticks out or is all that memorable, but a, a little bit of a complaint that I have is in some of these sort of action fight sequences, the shaky cam is just too much. It, it's just, it's over-edited, quick cut, shaky, you can't really tell up from down and side to side and, and what's what and all that stuff, and so... The camera work there left definitely left something to be desired, specifically during sort of the fighting action sequences. Now, being that I had watched the four seasons before this, and to be quite honest with you, I wasn't a huge fan of the previous season, season four, namely because of the characters. So I kind of had some reservations on how they were going to deal with the characters. And I will say that the characters here aren't great, but they are a little bit better than the previous season. And my main issue with the characters is that there's not really any sort of nuance. Characters are either good or bad. And the vast majority of the characters are just awful. They're just evil, vile, corrupt, terrible people who mistreat others in the worst ways imaginable, the most abusive ways imaginable. And so it really kind of hinders you from attaching and latching onto any characters because while there are a couple of good characters, they're not really all that interesting. The main protagonist here is Detective Rikers, and he is the obvious good guy that you kind of get behind and root for, but there's not really a whole lot to him. He's just a good guy because he's the one who's trying to solve the murders, and so he's just kind of the good guy by default. And so, other than him just being the one who's on the quest for good and justice, there's not really much more to his character that we really kind of learn about and find out about. And to be perfectly honest with you, the performance by the guy playing him is not all that great. And it's serviceable for the most part, but particularly when he gets angry and heated and gets into sort of, you know, yelling matches with other characters and stuff like that, it just, man, it really just does not come across very convincing it just some of the the line delivery there it's just artificial feeling and not very convincing and so 
even sort of the central protagonist is just not that great of a character. And like I said, the rest of the characters are all just terrible. And we as an audience don't necessarily have an issue with evil characters. I mean, some of the best characters of all time are bad guys, right? Darth Vader and Hannibal Lecter and things like that. But they're at least interesting and, and they're well developed and well fleshed out. And there's things there that are just complex. Whereas for the most part, the characters here are all bad and they're all just sort of one note, evil, bad. There's either black or white. There's not really any gray. One specific example is there are these two older sisters who have just recently discovered that they have a younger sister and they've welcomed her into their home and they turn out to be the most vile, cruel, evil, sadistic people. It's it's just awful and it's just it's so egregiously over the top it's just kind of like I kind of just sort of shook my head it, it reaches like levels of sort of unbelievability that it's just it's just kind of too much there's a couple characters that they do flesh out a little bit that I will give them credit for the first one is the character of George Rondeau who is the magician and you do get a little bit about him there is a little bit of depth and complexity to him as well and so uh, I will give him credit there. He's the magician, and so there's parts of his character to where, you know, he's performing these seances and these magic tricks, and you don't really know if it's real or if it's just all a trick and stuff like that. So there's some interesting things for, for his character. There's another character by the name of Salome who is a, a man who is a transvestite. He tr dresses as a woman, and he is a prostitute. They spend a part of an episode kind of going into his character a little bit, which I appreciated that they tried to kind of flesh him out a little bit. And he's obviously been victimized. He's had a really rough life for a lot of reasons. And so you kind of start sympathizing with him a little bit, but then they show some more of his backstory and all the decisions he's made since then. And it's like there's just so much bad stuff that's offset sort of your sympathy with him. You kind of lose all the sympathy that you grew to have for his character. And so like I said, the, the main complaint I have here is just with the characters. I will give a shout out, though, to Eric McCormick, who plays the character of Basil Garvey, who is one of the more evil characters in the series. And despite all my complaints on how evil everybody is, he really does. I think he does the best job is probably the best acting performance in this season. And so I'll give him some props. I think he does a pretty solid job with that character. Now, because this is a show called Slasher, after all, I'm sure you're wondering, yeah, but how are the kills? And if you're the type of viewer who can just kind of watch some slasher stuff and you're like, I don't really care about the characters. I'm not necessarily even here for the story. I just want to see some good, bloody, gory kills. There are some pretty good kills. And the thing, though, is that being that this is eight episodes, they range between 45 to 50 minutes. There's typically only one, maybe two kills per episode. And so they're kind of spaced out a little bit. But when you do get them... There is some pretty good kills. Some of them, I feel like they kind of pull back and are a little restrained with it. And then some of them, they're like overly gruesome and gory. And so it's kind of this weird sort of mixture. But also, too, you kind of get some nice gore with some of the autopsy scenes. One of the characters is a doctor. And so all the dead bodies, they get brought into her. And so, you know, she's got them laid out on the table and is cutting them open and stuff like that. And so I think if you're just here for sort of the blood and guts, I think for the most part, you're probably going to be satisfied. And finally, I just want to give you some overall thoughts on the story. And once it got to episode five, Right before the start of that episode, I made a prediction and I wrote it down and I said the killer is going to be one of two characters and I was correct. It was one of the two characters and by the next, I think it was the next episode, episode six, I knew that one of them wasn't the killer and so I pretty much had it all figured out by that point and so I would say it is somewhat predictable and I will keep the spoiler free but I'll just say to the, the way that they choose to kind of reveal who the killer is, it was really sort of tropey, like it fit within a sort of cliched kind of narrative trope that we've seen before. And just the way they reveal it is a little bit anticlimactic. And so there is a bit of, I guess, a disappointment there. However, being that this is a murder mystery, I just can't help but take a liking to these types of stories. And so 
look, overall, this is, I would say, fairly average, but I've watched plenty of average slasher movies, horror movies, and horror shows for that matter. And even in trying to be objective, while I can acknowledge it's nothing great, I can still enjoy myself and have a good enough time. And so for me personally, it was entertaining and enjoyable enough to keep watching. And look, it's just because I just love this genre. I love slashers. I love horror, obviously. I love the murder mystery. I love the detective story. And so even in saying that this is overall fairly average and middle of the road, I think if you are like myself and you just like this type of stuff, you're going to at least enjoy it enough to have a, a pretty good enough time while watching the fifth season of Slasher. So with all that being said, if I'm trying to be objective, I'll probably give this like a five and a half out of 10. But like I said, I just love this type of stuff. And so even it being middle of the road, I still enjoyed myself and had a pretty good time. So those are my thoughts on Slasher Ripper. Let me know if you guys have seen it, what your thoughts are. Would love to hear from you down below. That's all I got for you. Thank you for joining me today. Like always, hit that subscribe button if you enjoy videos like this because it's all horror and thriller content coming at you. The Haunted Beard. And I'll see you next time on The Haunted Beard. Haunted Beard.